Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. All right, welcome to it. This is Everyday Lessons Now. And it's amazing that I get so excited. I wonder if you guys feel like that when you go into your job. I get so excited <laughs> to come here each and every Monday. It's like the best part of the week for me. It makes Mondays way better. I remember a time when I hated coming out on a Monday. It's like, why? Who's the person that created weekends and then Monday? Hated it. But now, since started doing everyday lessons, Monday is such an amazing day because it's like you're excited to talk about the week, talk about the week past, talk about the week ahead, and just, yeah. you know, just crunch some things out and give you guys different perspectives. Yeah. So I want to welcome Dr. Amala. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. And I, I too am excited to do these because... You know, it's just a little bit of knowledge you could give, or a lot, in, in 20 minutes, you know, and, and people could leave feeling differently about something or just gaining a new perspective. So for me, it's, it's actually quite nice as well. Yes. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about decision making. And decision making because I may find myself in, in a, a situation just now where I need to make a decision. So I was just thinking about it and I'm thinking, I wonder how people go about making decisions and you know I tweeted about something recently where I said decision making does not have to be an Olympic sport so sometimes you are not sure what the decision is you need to make because you haven't really considered all the options or in many cases there may not necessarily be options so to say that need to be considered so for instance if you have to make a decision, let's say about taking a new job, because most times, you know, that's that's a big thing or about moving, let's say moving, moving house. Let's say the moving house comes with the fact that you have to take a new job. Right. So in my case, let's say I live in New Jersey and I'm moving to some other state, wherever it is. Um, what are the things that I would need to consider in accepting a job that is out of state? And what are things that other people would have to consider? So because I like lists, you know, I might just make a list. Not I might. I will make a list and start what, to do, yeah. you know. Like for sure, for sure. If there's one thing you can depend on is a list from her. She's going to get you a list for sure. And a detailed one too. Some people do lists, but I like her list because it's detailed. It's ball by ball. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you don't want to leave anything out. And then two years down the line, but I didn't think of that. Had I written it down, I might have seen it, you know. So for me, you know, a couple of things that I would consider would be, like, is this the state of school? Like, if I, if I do this, would it be okay? Is it the acceptable thing to do? Then you need to think of, well, acceptable for whom? Like, who's going to have to live with this decision? You know? So you start to think about things like that. Um, then you, for me, I would say, well, is this decision a gift? Like, is this what I really want? If, you know, all things being equal, would this be my first choice? Or why am I making this decision? You know, so there's stuff like that that I would have to consider. Is there an option? And I mean, there's always an option. So so let's not make it seem like there's never an option. There's always the option to say no, or yes, this is the one thing that I wanted. I'm happy it has come through or whatever, you know. Um, then I would consider, well, does it save me time? So in my grand uh, scheme of things, in my, my big goal list, where does this fall? Does it help me to get to whatever the end goal is faster? Or is this just like a stopgap measure and then, you know, I still need to do something else afterwards? You know, is it a stepping stone? Stuff like that. Um, if I don't make this decision, would I have fear of missing out? And that, I think, is a really huge one. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times people, they make a decision because they think, boy, if I don't do this, then I'm going to lose whatever it is they think they might be missing. And... You know, I, I think that's that's an important point that we can perhaps stop on and, and, and talk about for a little bit because a lot of times we we do things because we don't want to be the one, that one thing that we live with regret for. Yeah. And, you know, yesterday I read this thing about regret and it really had me thinking, well, you know, we perhaps should pay a lot more attention to regret than we do. We generally don't talk about regret like that because regret is like a heavy emotion. But regret could also make decision making in the now and in the future a lot easier, you know, because you have 
this thing that you, boy, I wish I did this one thing. And so when another opportunity like that comes along, you jump at it because, you know, oh, I remember when I didn't do this one thing right. and all the other things and the, the time that I had to live with not doing it and so on and so on. So, you know, fear of missing out is, is a huge one. It's a huge one. You might just want to consider that in your decision making and how that would make you feel. Yeah, you know? for real. And as we were talking off mic just now, but off camera, it's, it's really important to think about that in depth. And mm -hmm. I said something that, you know, people must make decisions for themselves. It's easy to say that, but sometimes you always have to look about the people that are around you. And... Mm -hmm. I learned over, over um, a short while, when I mean like recently, that you can't really see things like um, it depends on if you have children or not. Like some people force people into decisions because they do have kids. Like they will mm -hmm. encourage you, well, do it. You have no children. You have no, ah, the term that West Indian people love to use is you have no parrot and a stick. So, <laughs> you ever heard that before? You, know you that? really have nothing. Yeah. If you don't have a parrot and yeah. a stick. If you don't have a parrot and a stick, you don't have nothing. Yeah, and nothing. when people say that really and truly, then misusing the term the term of parrot course, and a stick course. means you absolutely have abs you have absolutely nothing but yeah. people use it when you don't have what they have right responsibilities that they have like mm -hmm. people project mm -hmm. onto you now you understand it's right. like mm -hmm. okay i have kids and i have a family and i have this and you don't know maybe i don't have a i don't have children like you but that does not say i don't have a parrot and i say i have responsibilities mm -hmm. or say i might have a small business that i just started that i mm -hmm. want to see grow into yeah, something yeah, and okay yeah. i got a new opportunity to go somewhere that will say so i should i should close up my little shop and just go and you're saying i should because why it's only one little yeah, shop yeah. i have and you have a big conglomerate of businesses but it's my mm -hmm. shop i love it i spend time mm -hmm. and yeah, i would, exactly. so in making decisions you have to put down everything and as as dr Mala said at the top writing it down might sound cliche and dumb but when you physically see it on paper yeah. all the things that would happen with the move first you're writing mm -hmm. what would the move do for me, I will say the question to ask yourself is, what position would I be five years after the move? Right. Like, where would I be in five and, years after And that's after a good, move? yes. That's, that's a good yardstick because sometimes people don't consider it. They look at the now. Yeah. You and can't look what at the this now. could bring now. And perhaps most times, people would look like a year out. But five years and three years, you know, those are, those are actually good yardsticks. And I think that now that we're living through a pandemic, people are finding it hard to want to plan, but force yourself to do it. Yeah, you, force you still, yourself you to still do have it because to. It's absolutely necessary. And I remember I did an exercise. This would have been whew, some years, well, like 17, 18 years ago. I met a young lady called Heather Pinnock. I'll call her name because she was very instrumental in something I was doing many moons ago. And mm. she had sent a list. This was somebody, this was, I guess, looking back at this now, this might have been the first person I ever interacted with who had major structure like yourself. Beautiful mm -hmm. structure. She sent a list with some questions that she wanted a favor. I met her while toying with Iowa and whatever. Mm -hmm. So she knew that, okay, I had this friend in Trinidad. When I mean friend, you know, acquaintance, we mm -hmm. share those days, you share emails and right. ICQ and I don't know, cell, was no, cell phone, yes, but I don't think WhatsApp and thing was a thing. And right. I remember her calling me and saying, listen, I'm sending you an email and I will love you to this. Answer my question here and send it back. I was mm -hmm. like, a question is, I thought it's something for a business. So, okay, mm -hmm. cool, no problem. I remember I could have been in Toronto or something when I got the email. And I was laughing at the questions. And now, in hindsight, you mm -hmm. could understand when we say when you're making a move because she was planning a move at the time. And this was 18 years ago. And she asked questions like, what is the cost of bread? What is the mm -hmm. cost for a jeans? Mm -hmm. what, is this, what, what, what does it cost to go on a movie date? Mm -hmm. she was asking really basic questions and I mm -hmm. couldn't understand it at the time because uh, yeah obviously 18 years younger and I'm like what to her it was a major move to leave her mm -hmm. country to come to Trinidad and I was asking why she said and she, I, what stood out is when she asked me what's the cost of a Levi's okay and mm -hmm. I didn't understand it at the time she said Levi's is the only brand in the world that has never really shifted their their, <laughs> their mission they sell jeans okay right 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 yeah. so you kind of have to grab where they are in terms yeah. of to where you're going to, 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 to pinpoint here. right so she mm -hmm. was really trying to get to what's cost of living like so she mm -hmm. wanted to know what's going to be her financial status in five years because she got a contract to come Trinidad for five years yeah. so she wanted to know where would I be in five years time if I make this move so she was trying mm -hmm. to deal with but more on the financial side and also she would I guess I, I didn't know at the time emotionally she wanted to know where she because she was thinking about okay should I end the relationship I'm in now 
Mm-hmm. Things like that. People have to ask mm-hmm. themselves these questions. Right. If you're right. in a fresh relationship, should you force something that you don't know where it's going in the first place because you're just a year in or should I end it? Um, and different things like that. So I think fast forward to now, in making decisions, these are the questions you might necessarily need to ask what's the cost of a Levi. But whatever you are going to do, you have to ask the basic questions, the mm-hmm. things that make you feel comfortable, the things right. that you can live with. Because, like, I will tell you this, I could speak for on Dr. Amala's behalf with this one. The next move she makes, one of the questions she will ask, does it snow? Because it's something... <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't... <laughs> and after what the happened this year... Trip. You understand? No, these are the questions. No, people take these things for yeah. granted. Because, you know, you get caught yeah. up in the hype. You get a job offer. The money sounds great. Everything sounds great. But right. the little things that you forget, the details now. Like, mm-hmm. okay, where am I? What is the, what is the living conditions like? Am I mm-hmm. going to be living in a house, a condo? Right. Um, yeah. where, am I, where I'm living, is it is it mainland? Meaning, or am I living far? How, is restaurants nearby? Is, is things nearby? A gym, a right. park? These little things. People is get caught up in the... Right, people get Perfect. caught up in the Everything offer. Everything you have to buy from a supermarket. Yeah, right, things like, things like that because you get caught up in the offer. The offer sounds good. Hey, yeah. this is what we're paying you. Whoa, I'm taking the job, go on. But does it compensate for all the things that you would you dislike? Exactly. Because you don't have to right. measure the things you dislike Exactly. to the money mm-hmm. that you're going to make. Mm-hmm. Let's say, mm-hmm. for instance, that you could only stay in a house with a big yard. You have to maintain mm-hmm. the yard. When it snows, you have to study all of that. So, and when that bad winter comes, mm-hmm. would it not be as bad? Who is going to shovel? <laughs> you understand? Some people might say, well, you'll have money, you could afford somebody to do it, but that's not necessarily how you, you fix all your problems. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And even if you can, who, who is to say that even if you could afford to get somebody, you will actually get somebody trustworthy? That's that's trustworthy enough yeah. to come into your space next thing you know you get somebody to come there and that and all is a whole lot because a lot is like right now i mean i've been trying for three years to get someone to come shovel but there isn't a business that does it you know um and every place i call they're like oh no we don't do residential so yeah. people here just have a snowblower and you know that's I a snowblower it. is really not on my list <laughs> So, you know. So, yeah, so yeah. When, when when thinking about a move, I think you have to really write it down and ask the little questions. I call it yeah. ask the little questions. The questions that you might normally overlook because it comes back to bite mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I had written down is will others think, huh? Um, and you kind of mentioned that in, in your um, talking about it because, you know, sometimes you make a decision and then other people, they're like, but she went to where? Yeah. You know, why would you, you know, and you want to know, well, if you don't take this opportunity and then five years down the line, you're telling people about it and they're like, but I don't understand why you would not have gone, Correct. you know? So you have to think of both sides. Will they be surprised if you do it? And you're not doing it for them, but it, we're asking that question helps you to see that there could be another perspective in looking at something. And you guys know, I like to do things collaboratively. So find somebody that you want to discuss stuff with. I mean, you know, you have to, I am a big advocate for trusting people and helping people uh, make decisions when they need to make decisions. So find someone who's going to help you to make a decision, you know, and discuss it with them. You, You may have your list and there may be one small thing that you forgot that might be important. You, That's know, right. you may not write it down, but they may ask you that question first. And you're like, wow, oh, I'm so happy I called you about this because I would, would not have thought of that. And that's that's really how you have to look at it. So decision making does not have to be an Olympic sport. Like I said in the beginning, you know, do some columns, two columns, three columns, want, will, won't, you know, so I want this. I, I don't want this. I will do this, you know, whatever. And just start writing down the things that you, you'd benefit from, the things that would change. Um, write down the things that would stay the same. Because there may be some things that would stay the same because you have, um, let's say it's a supermarket. You looked up whatever town and, oh, you, you go to ShopRite and there's a shop right there, you know, so that's fine. Um, in terms of the weather, for sure, the weather is a big one. I mean, if you've been living in, in, in the snow, um, then you know, you probably don't want to go to someplace that's worse, you know, no, but if it's, about, if it's about the same, then eh, okay. About the same, you can work it uh, because yeah. you've been doing, you, you've been there. You've been exactly. doing it, but about but about the same with certain changes, maybe a financial change, maybe a house change, different things like that. That could work because you're telling yourself, well, at least I got this. 
uh, upgrading right. some something has to be upgraded yes yes and, and that's the next thing with a move no it, it just doesn't make common sense to make a move that does not really upgrade any aspect of your life right and exactly. it could be a move for mental reasons Yes. You can move to because where you are right now is toxic. You're in a toxic environment. Mm-hmm. You're in a space where mm-hmm. you could be living with a parent. You could be living mm-hmm. with a family member. And it's just not been going good for the past eight years. And you need to be out for your mental sake. And mm-hmm. the place you might move to might necessarily be as quote unquote. I'm putting air quotes there for those who could see. And if you're not seeing any hearing air quotes saying that it might not be better than where you are aesthetically. But right. mentally... But you can wake mind. up and smile and the peace there, of mind is priceless is no price for peace yeah of you can wake no up in the morning make yourself a coffee with no stress mm-hmm. not having to mm-hmm. answer or or or, or m- manage somebody else's feelings in a space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is very mm-hmm. difficult to do and you also have to i i would like to point out that sometimes it's not always about money in fact it, it should never be always about money like they, well this is going to pay me so much more so i'm going to go mm-hmm. because sometimes you could move for less because of all those things you just said and peace of mind being number one um you know peace of mind and also if it's a stepping stone to a major goal Correct. you know i feel like that should be something that you would consider taking a pay cut for because you know it's a sacrifice and if you're doing a five-year plan, then you understand how long this sacrifice is going to work. And sometimes people don't want to do that. They're like, no, well, why would I work for this? Because it might set you up to launch off when you're Into something done with way that better, period. correct. At least yeah. you will have it yeah. under your belt for exactly. now. And, exactly. But you have to also have the right mindset. You have to know yes. within yourself too that you're on a plan. And you, and in making these plans, as we, go, we always go back to the basics. You write it down. So if mm-hmm. you have set goals, and we've spoken about goals in in previous podcasts you can Mm -hmm. go back and check it if you set your goals and you understand what it is you want to do you will know that okay this is definitely a stepping stone if you're unsure it's because your goals are not set you understand if you if you're in a situation right now and you unsure if this is a stepping stone or not it's because your goals are not set you're not really Mm -hmm. ready yet you're not at the point where you know what it is you want and what it is you're doing because from the Mm -hmm. time you know what you want and doing you will automatically know what position is and it's like going up a staircase you have all these long staircases if you go to an auditorium or you go to like a stadium you know but you know okay if you're sitting in aisle 35 and and seat 12 you know you have 34 steps to climb to get to mm-hmm. aisle 35 but mm-hmm. if you don't know what aisle is in you know you have a blank open ticket you're, you're gonna be walking <laughs> walking walking aimlessly that is basically the same right. thing if yeah. you don't really plan your life out in such a way to know that okay this is what i'm gonna do for the next five years and when i'm finished with this i can then use that tool to go to what i really want that is what you saw that's proper goal setting if you're looking at it that way so in and all of those tools you have to use when you're planning a move yeah planning change you think it's making a decision in yep. making a decision so all of these things help in making the right decision and again you have to remember too all things are not perfect and don't beat yourself up if you happen to make a mistake along the way. Be thankful that you made you it, chalk it and up to now experience. chalk it up to experience. We never yep. lose. Always yeah, remember exactly. that you never lose. You learn. You learn. Yeah. You, you don't learn. lose. You learn. So you just mm-hmm. learn that. Okay, that one was a bad move. It's come like driving. How much times if you move to a new city and you you try to be the that guy? You want to get it with outways. And you make two wrong turns. And you're like, oh gosh, I should not pass <laughs> there. But you went past tomorrow because you're right. you know. Right. That was the wrong corner. So next tomorrow, you're not going to pass there. So it's the same thing. You have to yes. kind of just employ. Yes, life will give you some easy days. Like ways. Ways is like mm. the easier approach to finding a destination. Mm. In life, you will get ways now and again. You might win mm. a scratch. Somebody might do something. You might be, somebody might pay it forward to you. You might have a great day one day. But mm-hmm. in life, you have to continue working every day and doing the things that you have to do. And at some point... You might make a wrong turn, but it's okay. And if you have a Marine in your life, they might tell you the only easy day was yesterday. Correct. So, you yeah. know. That's a deep <laughs> you one. You gotta put in some planning. That's a deep one. The only easy day was yesterday, and yesterday was hella hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's really something a Marine will say, boy. Wow. The yeah. only easy day was yesterday, but yesterday right. I couldn't even breathe. But okay, yeah, it was easy. Exactly. Today's gonna be right. worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you need to do some planning. Ah, that's funny. And guys, just like that, we come to the end. You see how easy yes, it is? Indeed. So you have learned that you have to put in some work when looking to make that decision when 
making decisions and plan things out to get the best result. Absolutely. Closing words? Uh, just that you need to write things down. <laughs> write things down and decision making is going to be simpler. Just, you know, is it a gift or is it not? Is it an option or is it not? You know, and take it from there. Yes, sir. And you know what we do? We send you all dancing. Let's go.